checks his notes while telling us, ignore my direct quotes. On Monday, President Biden referred to a printed cheat sheet and not the label with his name and return address on it, while claiming he had no apologies for his remarks that Putin cannot remain in power. And that's how he'll start World War III, with cliff notes. On the bright side, the president can still read. Among the, Joes, among the notes captured on that photo, I was expressing the moral outrage I felt towards the actions of this man. Why do you need notes for that? Also, I was not articulating a change in policy. You know, it's sad. Biden needs notes to explain what he said without notes. Meanwhile, one former KBG, KBG, KGB agent said Biden's hindering negotiations. Every time our president uh, makes a personal attack on Vladimir Putin, I cringe because Putin is paranoid. So why negotiate? And when, when, when somebody like that is in a corner, then watch out. He might actually uh, take uh, 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 go, go to weapons that nobody wants. All right. Sorry, Boris. That's just how Joe rolls. He's scared corn pop out of using nukes, and he'll do the same with Putin. Of course, Biden's got plenty of support in his corner. Unfortunately, so did Michael Spinks, the boxing reference. <laughs> Former Defense Secretary Leon Panetta says Joe stumbles are because he's Irish. At this point in the game, you've really got to keep your messages very simple and very direct. And I think this created some confusion uh, that wasn't helpful. I happen to think that Joe Biden, uh, you know, is Irish, uh, really has a great deal of compassion when he sees that people are suffering. In that case, I've seen drunk leprechauns with better judgment. A bigot would say, not me. If Joe's so sensitive to people suffering, here's a tip. Stop causing it. And you know it's bad when Don Lemon is defending you. Quite honestly, I think this, this is a media-manufactured story. I think we should ease off a little bit because that's not what the president said. He, is, he did not say regime change. I uh, kind of did. But at least when he says something stupid, no one's watching. So what does Joe think? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, 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 that guy's right. I'm, I'm Irish, man. When, when I get emotional, I start seeing moons and stars and clovers. And then I am ready to go. I am ready to dance, man. That was unexpected. <laughs> I like it when I don't watch stuff before I like, do the show. <laughs> Eric, he's Irish, so we should cut him some slack. <laughs> what, what is it with picking on the Irish this week? Right, so, so Biden, earlier this yeah. week, he goes, I may be Irish, but I'm not stupid, I, which yeah. is like the, the greatest it's disrespect. <laughs> Why is everybody picking on the Irish? I love the Irish. The Irish are the greatest people in the world. But like, this whole thing is just theater. It's, it's all a joke. Like, it, Can you think of a time where we've ever had to have France be the negotiators for... America, like the fact that we can't actually talk to world leaders because the world leaders either disrespect us, don't like us because we mess up our foreign policy. I mean, we can't call Putin. We can't call Saudi Arabia. We can't yeah. call we can't call anybody right now. Yeah. And we actually have to negotiate through a country that's one tenth our size from a GDP standpoint. Like to me, that's awfully sad. Yeah. It shouldn't happen. America should be able to pick up the phone. The president of the United States should be able to pick up the phone from the Oval Office and call and actually effectuate change, and this guy can't do it. Maybe it's the type of phone. If it was a rotary phone, Tyrus, Biden would be all over it. But he, these <laughs> things yeah, are very... Real, you know, he really? Yeah. S simple Joe, for real? Like, yeah. I no. He can handle a push-button no. push one. You know how many staff done. members have to pull his fingers out of the phone? And yes. It'd be wrapped around his neck and <laughs> out of how, cord. And, <laughs> no. Remember how long, when somebody had a, a zero, he had to go all the what way around? What did you say? He had to redial? He yeah. had to click it? Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, yeah. I heard stories. I'm not going to... You know what? I, look at... I use notes okay, all the okay. time. Okay, I, I know what I I was prepared for that. Yes. Okay, but your notes are complicated and probably a little obscene. <laughs> <laughs> True. His notes were so simple, simple that it is sad. Yeah. He, they the questions were written for him, so that means that the press had to submit those questions for them. Mm -hmm. And they a cheat sheet is if this if that this was a compete sheet. Mm -hmm. So basically, it was you're going to get asked this question and this answer and this man had to hold it in his hand he still couldn't leave it in front of him yep. he couldn't remember 
three three questions. Yeah. You couldn't remember, and they were always like, and they were his thoughts were the answers. Yeah. It wasn't. They weren't math. It wasn't a math test. No. It wasn't a litmus test. It was asking him about something he said 24 exactly. hours ago. If there's ne and no jokes aside, this is a man who's suffering from dementia or the point where, and that right there, that should be the thing that the Senate is looking at. That is the type of notes, not even written in his own hand. Someone had to write it for him. Yeah. And, it's, and it's scary. Cat, uh, yeah, it, 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 he was expressing moral outrage. You don't even have to, I don't even have to write notes for my moral outrage. But then again, I'm never morally outraged because I'm so disgusting. That's true. You don't really have, <laughs> really have moral out. I would call it moral outrage. <laughs> outrage. Uh, yeah, I think the problem is that I don't think Putin watches Don Lemon tonight. Yeah. Like, yes. the, <laughs> the issue this whole time wasn't that, oh, that's not what he said. You have to get it right. To do it's that Putin did think that he was talking about regime change. Mm -hmm. So that is a problem, just objectively. Mm -hmm. He's obviously feels threatened by this, and because Biden, we you know, United States has nukes. Obviously, he feels threatened. That's what people are concerned about. Not that oh, he said a bad thing. It's about what the consequences of that could potentially be. All right, Pete. I'm going to ask you the question, the hot question. Okay. Well, that should be a new thing. Where I go, we're going to ask the hot question, and then this thing comes out. Just, <laughs> hot question. There is a belief, and I think Neil Ferguson mentioned this in Bloomberg, that. The White House has a desire to keep the war going in order to bleed Russia dry, which cynically and willingly accepts thousands of dead Ukrainians. Like, we want this to keep going because it hurts Russia, and we know, we know that that means more, more, we don't, we want this to go on. Do you buy that? Uh, no, because it infers competency mm. on the Biden administration. Oh, it means that they actually have a strategy. As if they had actually a have a strategy. Right. You, you don't spend two months before the war breaks out saying you're going to issue sanctions to deter the war. Right. And then the war actually That's happens. Right. And you, yeah. Okay, and then it becomes a morass, and you, you, you go for three days over to Poland, and mm. you say, we might use chemical weapons. Oh, we're going to help. We're going to send American troops into your country. And oh, by the way, regime change, that's where we're at. Yeah. And then and then he walks to the podium in the White House. You look at the top of that card. It says, tough Putin Q&A. <laughs> yeah, I know. What does that tough mean? It's Putin. brutal. The, the toughest question you're going to get is the absolutely most <laughs> obvious question you're going to be asked. Because you said at the end of the script when you went off your teleprompter that... Putin needs to go. And your answer is moral outrage in one bullet, and you repeat it over and over again. Yeah. I like, I love playing the what if Trump game, mm -hmm. especially when there's a Trump here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I like what if game Trump game. Say, would say, how quickly would they invoke the 25th Amendment yeah. right now if it were Trump? Mm -hmm. In 10 seconds. Instead, they're playing defense for this guy, who now today, they're trying to explain why we're now training Ukrainian troops in Poland, mm -hmm. because he said they were going to Ukraine, and then he said, no, we're training them, which we're not doing. Yeah. It's an absolute mess, and it's an embarrassment, and it's unacceptable. I mean, the fact is, that's humiliating to give him that. and to it, 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 they, they had to tell him, we don't trust you to do this on your own. It's like, it's like okay, we let you go out there on your own once, <laughs> and true. you screwed up. And then you true. screwed up a second time. We're giving you notes. I mean, it's, like it's, like, it's kind of like a punishment. Very they can only fit two questions on his notes. I know. All right, this makes me sick to my stomach. Or it could have been the chili. <laughs> Up next, claims of abuse made Dems giddy up, but as it turns out, they made it all up.